Arcane Tremors and Vaults. This is where you're going to spend 80% of your time this season. Let me explain why and how the mechanic exactly works, and especially the dirty little secrets of the Tremors and Vaults, including an Uber Vault. First, Arcane Tremors. They're the new overworld activity, and they're replacing the Blood Harvest that we used to have. Arcane Tremors will be available throughout the whole map, and this is also where we're going to spend our time leveling up. Step one is finding the overworld hazard, like these towers or just constructs, and they will drop cores. These cores you need to gather and bring to a brazier. At the brazier, as you then deposit the cores, there's a bunch of minions summoning, and in the end, a herald of Melphis will pop out. Melphis is the leader of this season, the boss of the vault. If you kill this herald of Melphis, you'll get loot and also pearls of warding. The pearls of warding will be needed for the vault, and you'll need a lot of them for even more loot. Therefore, it's very easy to say that this is your main activity, not sitting in Domheim tunnels. The very interesting part is that while you're doing this, there will also be whispers. The standard ones like kill units, collect the orbs, or maybe just find the ravaged corpse. But there's probably going to be also tremor adjacent whispers, like clear three tremors in Fractured Peaks, and then also get Tree of Whisper XP. The combination of these two things is probably what aids you in World Tier 2 with my new revised 1 to 100 level guide at the end. Vaults are the pinnacle of this season. They're the new end game activity because there's not only vaults, there's also nightmare vaults. But first, let's cover the vaults themselves. There's four in total and three different ones you have access to in the beginning. Vaults are having traps everywhere around and you have to navigate through them. And here's where the pearls of warding come in. In the vault, you will find the statue of Zoltan Cole. And every vault obviously has one because they're kind of his vaults. If you deposit the pearls of warding, you get three stacks of Zoltan Cold's blessing. If you manage to keep the blessing until the end of the vault, you will be actually getting more loot. Even if you don't keep it, there's still loot. Only with a blessing, you'll be able to open the wart woven chest. The blessing goes down as you get hit by traps. So it's most likely not going to be damaged because damage is too easy to avoid, but hit by traps. Now the question obviously is, does my blood mist completely save me? Or if I'm going to be hit inside a blood mist, is it still going to be reducing our blessing? We will see. Generally, if you have a highly agile character that can dish back and forth, teleport, and other shebang, that will be very useful for the vaults. But I said three vaults you have active to and nightmare vaults. There's also something called the Uber Vault. Let's check that first. There is Uber Malphys in there. And Uber Malphys will drop the unique tuning stones. And this one gives you plus four to all ranks, to all your skills. You can pretty much have that permanently activated. So you will want to kill Uber Malphys. They didn't tell us how to get there, but they showed us three vault entrances and didn't talk about the fourth one. So the assumption is very simple. You do vault one, two, and three, and afterwards you can do one Uber vault. That makes perfect sense because right now every Uber boss has a set of activities you need to do to get there. And these activities take everything from 15 to 30 minutes. Doing three vaults to then do an Uber vault sounds kind of like a 30 minute activity or one. See, seems to me that it would make perfect sense. Now, finally, Nightmare Vaults. Why are they so amazing? Because you can level up your glyph in there. So instead of just doing standard Nightmare Dungeons, you can also now do Nightmare Vaults, which are essentially a nightmare. <laughs> they're going to have more traps. They're going to be more dangerous, but they also have way more loot again. So they're not going to be harder, but it's just going to be a bonus activity to be able to dodge the traps as you're getting things done and just having fun. But if you want to do brain dead grind, I would assume that tier 90 plus dungeon is what you're aiming for, because now tier 90 plus dungeons actually drops 925 gear. Probably at the end, they didn't quote that correctly. The last two, three items you're going to get are all always going to be 925. And there's overall just more 925 gear dropping from 90 plus on. The sigils for Nightmare Vaults essentially just drop in World Tier 3 and 4, alongside normal Nightmare Sigils. So you still have the option to do both, but why choose the boring one when you could have the fun one? Now, before we get into the leveling, two extremely important things. There's a whole new trading hub. Yes, below Kazakhstan, where you essentially go into the vaults and where you have the access to these vault portals, there is a hub that has everything. Town portal in the middle, then your curiosity vendor, the Enchanta, Smith, all of it. And there is also the jeweler who is going to make you more 
tuning stones and upgrade your tuning stones. The material for the upgrades are found from vaults and the arcane tremors. Again, a reason to be in the tremors. And this will allow you at the jeweler down in the hub. That's why I mentioned it to actually craft even more tuning and governing stones to then also upgrade their ranks. Now, with all this knowledge, our level pass is pretty clear in season three. Step one from level one to 35 slash 40, you're going to be doing arcane tremors and one, two, three vaults. Keep in mind that you want to hoard most of the pearls of warding for world tier three and four, because then in nightmare vaults with the pearls of warding, you can get way more loot. And the level one to 35, you're going to do in world tier two, especially as the Necromancer. Why world tier two? Usually I would say that it's not worth it with the bonus XP because you're killing slower, but you get the Seneschal companion who's essentially going to be with you from level eight on, and he's going to boost your combat strength so much. It's absolutely worth it to go for world tier two. With whisper activities and tremors, you should be just flying through the levels to then already do the capstone dungeon which then brings us into the world tier 3 problematic again because you're going to be too weak to do overworld content maybe your seneschal companion is going to be strong enough all in all do three four five strongholds quickly because they are level gated so if you go with level 35 or 40 already in world tier 3 the strongholds are still your level that means easy experience to level 40 42 put on sacred gear and then rinse and repeat do the overworld content plus some legion events for free experience but still continue doing arcane tremors for more pearls of warding that we can then finally start already doing nightmare vaults i would probably wait with nightmare vaults until world tier 4 because the glyph xp in world tier 3 is mostly useless and you're faster through just doing the overworld content then with level 55 and or latest 60 you want to go for the next capstone dungeon to then be into world tier four and in world tier four we got all the activities legion events for blood hell tides for steel arcane tremors for pearls and then nightmare vaults for leveling up our glyph xp and there also we're aiming for uber malphys to get the legendary tuning stones you could probably try to get them in world tier three already but i do believe that uber malphys probably has 925 gear around as well. So postponing that to world tier four might be the smarter choice here. Also, please don't waste your Varshan materials on world tier three. You also want to use that on world tier four for the maximum item level drops. And then around level 80, 85, you already want to start farming tier 90 because that's where your 925 gear can drop for you. 80 to 85, depending on your build, should be perfectly fine. And we're doing all of this end of the day to prepare for the gauntlet that you can do top thousand top 10 all of ancients and get your very good looking frame ladies and gentlemen how are you feeling about the seasonal mechanic i kind of like how they took the blood harvest concept and made it into something new and exciting and i'm really looking forward to it especially killing uber malphys and nightmare vaults if you want to have the fireside chat gathered together check this out or even more detailed level guide here's the video for you